instead of one vent erupting multiple times, we can see multiple vents erupting more or less one time each. These are what you would call monogenetic volcanoes, where basically for a few decades or maybe a thousand years, one eruption occurs that builds one kind of mountain, the most common volcano in the world, which is known as a cinder cone. So what's the difference between those shield volcanoes and cinder cones? Well, shield volcanoes are the result of low viscous magma that is also low in volatiles. Volatiles are things like water and carbon dioxide, molecules that are gases at relatively low pressures. Well, that water and carbon dioxide can actually dissolve into that magma chamber deep below the earth. Instead of having flowing kind of rivers of lava, it will aerosol that molten rock and you'll have a volcanic fountain spewing hundreds or thousands of feet into the air. Each one of these little pebbles, these were solid pieces of lava that when they flew up in the air, solidified and landed back on the ground. Do that enough times and over the course of decades or thousands of years, those piles of cinder will create these massive cones. One cool thing you can do to visualize how the cone itself formed is just pick up some of the local gravel and pebbles and like the fountain flying down from the air, just kind of drop them straight down. And you can see as they hit the ground, they start to pile up and build a mound. And you can continue to do that over and over again, just like how this cinder cone was erupting thousands of years ago and do it enough times and eventually you'll start to build your own little cinder cone right in front of you. As that lava fountain is spewing molten rock thousands of feet into the air, each droplet is solidifying and falling back to the ground. Now typically those droplets are small in size and that's what we call cinder, but sometimes the droplets are massive. So imagine this as a massive molten slab of igneous rock flying up into the air, solidifying into a boulder and falling back to the ground with tremendous amounts of force. Well, that's why these are called volcanic bombs. And this is something you will also see in the San Francisco volcanic field and very common around cinder cones. So here at the base of SP Crater, one of the hundreds of cinder cones in the San Francisco volcanic field, it's a great place to compare and contrast the different kinds of lava flow that you can see. Lava that was rich in volatiles erupted, creating a fountain of lava, dropping its little cinders to pile up into a cone. But some of the lava that was erupting here during that same time was not rich in volatiles. So more like a shield volcano, the lava slowly oozed out of the side of the vent, creating this river of lava and field of basalt that we see here. Now something else you'll notice is a lot of the rock is this really dark black, but it's also got reddish stain to it. And some of the rocks themselves are more red in color. The black and the red are both the result of iron. So basaltic lavas are rich in iron and magnesium, which gives them more of a dark color. But just like the iron that oxidizes on your car will rust, the same thing can happen to rocks. So this reddish color that you see on a lot of the rocks here, that is the iron inside of the basalt oxidizing and rusting away. One thing that's very common to see in basalt is this kind of Swiss cheese look to it, all these little pockets and pits inside of it. Those are also the result of those volatiles. Sometimes that gas, gaseous molecule doesn't escape and is trapped in the rock as it solidifies. And wherever there was gas, well now we've got a hollow spot creating these little pores all along the basalt here.